Hey Vision Chasers, this is Dr. Bird here with the Social Studies lesson for you today. You know, today's lesson reminds us that it is very important to be adaptable. It's very important to assess each situation in a unique way and take everything that you see in and make decisions based on that as opposed to uh, possibly being arrogant and saying, oh, I can do this because I did the same thing back in another situation. It's very important to take into account all factors before you make uh, a decision as opposed to just doing the same thing over and over again because that's how many people make mistakes and many of those mistakes can be very, very costly because you're overlooking the most obvious thing and it's right in front of you. So we're gonna learn this lesson through the attempt to, the first attempt to build the Panama Canal. So the man who made this unfortunate mistake, his name was Ferdinand de Lesseps, and he was a French politician and an entrepreneur. It was his business that built the Suez Canal in 1869. And, and when it was, when the Suez Canal was completed that year, he was king of the world. Now, a canal is, a, is simply a man-made waterway. And here on your screen, you can see uh, it was a quicker connection for Europe and East Asia. And here on your screen, you can see that it connected Europe and East Asia. And this was a very big deal because it allowed goods to flow uh, quicker through those territories. And it connected the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea. And it's important for me to say, keep this in mind, that it was at sea level meaning that there wasn't any extra work to have to do to, to make it flow evenly from the Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea. They didn't have any problems because it was all level, the same level. And to this day, because this was such a big deal, there is a statue at the entrance of the Suez Canal of Ferdinand de Lesseps. And many people were happy about him finishing the Suez Canal because he finished this canal through a company that was publicly traded, meaning that he sold shares of this company in order to raise the money to build the canal. And once the canal was built, those shares that people owned grew tremendously in value. And so as Deliceps was basking in the glory uh, that he received for finishing the Suez Canal, there was another canal in Central America that had been talked about some, for some time. And ultimately, Deliceps was called about uh, building this canal. So let's take a few steps back. Panama, which is in Central America, was actually making history the first, the very first transcontinental railroad was completed in Panama in 1855. Sadly, a lot of people died building this railroad. Uh, it was estimated that about 6,000 people died because of a, no a number of diseases, cholera and smallpox, just to name a couple. And so an interesting point about this railroad is that it is built largely because a number of people are tra traveling to California because of the gold rush. And so this railroad is going to be important because it was decided that the canal would be built along the railroad and the railroad was actually going to be very important in terms of helping to build the canal. So Deliceps is called in to lead the building of this canal. And there were a number, and sadly, there were a number of factors that he did not take into account. This was going to be a completely different job. He did not consider that the climate was conducive to mosquitoes because of the rainfall. And it would be the mosquitoes that would end up killing a lot of the workers. And the, the rainy seasons would make it so difficult to dig, the, dig into the land and remove it. Um, actually digging made it worse and it made more work for the workers. So imagine, um, I'd say digging a, a, a hole at the beach, you know, as you're, as you keep digging, there, there's sand that continues to fall in. And so the workers were having to do double the work. And of course they were being paid very, very little. 
Additionally, he demanded on making this a sea level canal, just like he did with the Suez Canal, but the terrain was not conducive to building a sea level canal because he was going to have to dig into uh, the land in order to make it level so the water would flow freely and the ships could flow freely through this canal without running into any land. And so he paid a huge price for this because it was so difficult to remove that dirt to make it level. And I want to share this with you because it was really interesting as I was doing the research for this lesson. And ultimately, he realized that he was going to have to change the plans because the project was was becoming much more expensive than he originally promised the shareholders of this new company. So he changes the plans. Instead of making it a sea level, he decides to build locks. Now, I can show you better than I can uh, explain it to you, um, but def uh, on your screen here, you can see what it is. A lock is, is really interesting. So it's a, a locks are used when a, for a canal that's not at sea level, it's not even, it's not level. So a, a lock is uh, two dams. And so when, when the ship, it lets, one dam lets the ship in and then uh, water is pumped in to where the ship is and it, and it raises the ship up so that it can flow uh, out of the other dam. And when the ship reaches the, the next lock, if it has to, there, there is uh, the, the reverse can happen. So the ship can go into the lock and they'll pump out the water to lower the ship so that it can flow um, out the other way. And so it, it's really interesting, as you can see here on your screen, really interesting technology that they had back then. And if you're a shareholder of a business, you want that business to do well because as that business is doing well, the value of your shares is going to rise. But Deliceps was able to comfort them and smooth things over. He was a smooth talker and he also had the press. They were, uh, he had the press in his back pocket and they actually, well, basically they lied for him. They, they covered the whole thing up. They covered the troubles that Deliceps was having actually building this canal. It got, to, it got so bad that there were 200 workers dying per month from the yellow fever or malaria. After huge rainfalls, there were newly created swamplands in the areas that they dug, creating a breeding ground for mosquitoes. And, some of the, and sadly, some of the workers couldn't afford treatment, and so they just didn't seek it. Interesting side note, when Deliceps changed the plan to build the locks, he, interesting side note, when he decided to uh, abandon the sea level plan and build, in, build locks, he brought in a French engineer, he brought in a French engineer named Gustave Eiffel. Does that name sound familiar? It should, it is that Eiffel of the Eiffel Tower. So ultimately, investors would lose faith in the project. Um, and when he asked for more money, investors said, absolutely not. The stock in his company would drop and Delisup's company would go bankrupt in 1889. And he did not take defeat very well. Um, he tried many times to keep this project alive and ultimately he was forced to just give it up. Now, this whole affair uncovered a lot of shady stuff going on behind the scenes. Deliceps was in trouble uh, for misusing funds, and it was also discovered that there were politicians in on the cover-up of uh, a lot of the delays and the, the horrors that were going on in terms of the, the, the rising death toll uh, that went along with building this canal. And another sad piece of history was that um, there at the at the time, and this is really really um, unfortunate. But at the time, uh, there were many people who were actually blaming uh, Jewish bankers for 
uh, just the, this whole scandal of the Panama Canal, all these politicians being caught up in, in bribery and, and lying and all that stuff. And so it was uh, a lot of people blame the Jewish people for uh, the, the shame uh, that it brought, uh, that, it, that it brought the, the French people. Um, and so it was very, very unfortunate as I was uh, doing some research uh, for this lesson, there were uh, newspapers and things that were circulated, um, you know, aimed at uh, aimed at Jewish people, and uh, it was very uh, just. I was very uncomfortable reading uh, a lot of these things, and just to know that um, you know those things were uh, widely accepted uh, during that time. And so ultimately, we know that it was not uh, the, the fault of the Jewish people um, that this project failed. Uh, Deliceps himself, he made a lot of mistakes, and his biggest mistake was not assessing the situation in Panama as a unique one. It was nothing like building the Suez Canal. It was totally different. And even when he saw workers dying by the hundreds, he was very, very stubborn and he kept going on with uh, something that he had done in the past. And uh, five years after he finally gave up on building the canal, uh, Deliceps uh, would die. So he'd never uh, be able to see the canal uh, uh, finished and uh, by the Americans uh, later. And so that is the story of the first attempt at building the Panama Canal. There is the rest of the story, and um, I'll be posting that really, really soon so you can find out uh, the rest of the story. But I want you to check the Vision Chasers website for more tips and tools to help you as you chase your vision of success. Also, feel free to download the worksheet that goes with this video to further your knowledge of the first attempt to build the Panama Canal. So there you have it. And until we meet again, please keep chasing the vision.